have an opportunity to drive a 2023 Mazda CX-50. So this is the new vehicle for Mazda. Um, again, so I've actually had a full overview of the features and pushed all the buttons and all that stuff, show, going over the whole vehicle. Um, but I just wanted to talk about how subjective this vehicle is. Uh, some people really like it, and there's actually some things that could be deal breakers, depending on your preferences. Uh, so just overall, the way it looks, I think it looks good. I think a lot of people will have no problem with the, the way it looks. It has the large wheels, even though that they kind of advertise this as partially like an off-road type vehicle it doesn't really truly mechanically be set up for off-roading like any kind of serious off-roading has the 20 inch wheels and and just kind of um you know not really the undercarriage for it and all that stuff but uh mechanically uh but it is fun to drive and easy to drive for the most part um and you know practically speaking it's decent on gas it's easy to get in and out of and it looks good. I mean, the inside, the, the, the inside, the seats look really nice. Uh, the steering wheel is comfortable. And, you know, there's a lot of pluses to say. Uh, the back seats are decent size. The cargo space is really good. I really like the amount of space you have uh, in the cargo area. Uh, the only thing that I would add is that you really need a rubber mat back here because the the surface is so slippery that things tend to slide around while you're driving so they're sliding all over the place as i'm driving so some kind of rubber mat or some kind of way of securing whatever you put back here is pretty much a must and you can easily fold the seats down using these levers uh, there is a spare tire with a subwoofer and the sound system sounds good sounds really good uh, and it has the ability to have where you just walk away with the key and it automatically locks the key is one of those things that's, that could potentially be a deal breaker for some people because carrying this thing around has been a little bit of a hassle. It, it's kind of big, bulky, and there's not much in there. It's a lot of empty space, so the bulkiness just kind of gets in the way, especially if you wear shorts a lot. Uh, and also the buttons. I'm always, or I'm, I have a problem with accidentally pressing the panic button and the different buttons on it while it's in my pocket. Uh, so that's not very fun. The other deal breaker, I would say, the other deal, deal breaker is the seat. For me, is not comfortable. A lot of other people say it's fine. It looks good. It feels good to them. But in my case, uh, and this is like a common thing with Mazda for me, is that the seats don't feel comfortable. And just the seating position on some of the Mazdas is not all that great for me. You know, so that's a subjective thing. Uh, this right here is, is a hard plastic and it kind of gets in the way. And uh, it's not really in the way, in the way. It's just the way I sit, it, my legs uh, on it all the time. Other mo There's some other Mazdas where the, the actual center console is literally in the way of the pedal. But this one's not like that. There is enough room, but I just tend to be leaning on it too much with my leg. And it gets a little bit of uh, uncomfortable. And I do have to put the seat all the way back. I'm six feet tall, so I do have to put the seat all the way back in order to drive the vehicle and I, I never really could get the seat in a comfortable position it's too firm feeling and i don't know it's just not really 100 percent perfect for me sound system is great the bose sound system sounds really good you do have to adjust it make sure it's good uh, for you the sound you know bass treble stuff like that steering wheel is very comfortable and uh easy to turn it has a little bit of a sporty feel to the steering but it's fine, it feels really good and it feels solid. Very solid feeling vehicle. Uh, the steering, the brakes, the acceleration, the, the shifting of the transmission is great. Uh, and it's relatively quiet and it's fast. It's fast enough for most people, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, but yeah, I really like the way these seats look. All the stitching and everything. These are just black so, you know, they have different colors and I, I, I like the I like just the seat design. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the color is. The headlights are fantastic too. I have a night video and a day video showing you what it looks like, the headlights and all that stuff going down the road. Uh, so yeah, it, that part is the, the, the lighting at nighttime. There's some pluses and minuses. You can check that out, video out later. That's a completely separate top or, topic. But the headlights are good.
Another thing that is a little bit subjective is this camera system and the camera system works good i mean you can see around the vehicle front and back and all that stuff uh, but the only thing that's subjective is that it's kind of small and it's kind of far away uh, so if you can see it fine then great you know uh, but you know just it's it'd be a nicer if it was a little bit bigger screen i think another thing that people have uh, issue with and i do to some degree is that it's kind of a Far, the, the screen's far away and so you don't touch it. It's not really intended to be a touch screen, really. Uh, I mean, technically an Apple CarPlay or whatever, you can touch the screen, but it's not really intended to be. You can see it's not really intended to be a touch screen. You use this dial right here. So the dial is, is a little bit of a learning curve. There's certain things that you kind of have to get used to because it, it's, it's not like as intuitive as say a touchscreen so you have to spend a little bit of time with it and once you do that you know uh, most people seem to have no problem with it uh after a while the the charging the the cell phone charger wireless one that's under here is basically not really worth i mean it doesn't work with my phone and it seems like even with the case off, it doesn't really work that all that all the time. So you can't really rely on it. You know, you, you think it's charging and it's not really charging and then you get where you're going and then your phone's dead. Um, so stuff like that. Uh, so you want to plug in your phone anyway. So that so cell phone charger, you know, at least in my situation, doesn't seem to be as useful as it could have been. You know, it could have been a great position and everything, but you know, it's, it's, not all that great uh the suspension is a little stiff but i like it i do like the suspension i do like the the stiffness of it because it just feels like you're on a, in a solid vehicle uh i mean a part of it is it has as huge wheels but even even so i mean this the suspension system for me is is good i mean i i don't i don't have a problem with it some people might um but you know, I'm kind of partial to stiff suspensions. I don't really like floaty, bouncy, floaty vehicles anyway. Uh, that kind of gets me nauseous. So I'd rather have the, the jarring, uh, stiffer suspension than the floaty, bouncy type stuff. And this isn't really like jarring. I mean, it's actually pretty good, but it is uh, stiff. Now it has the idle stop and I forgot to turn it off, but it does have that in this model. So we're going to go over some bumpy roads. We're also going to go on a highway that has a speed limit of 70 miles per hour. Uh, and so you can get an idea of what that's about. The road noise and all that stuff, exterior noise. The heads up display is good. Uh, it has basic information and it's easy to see and it's easy to read. It's not blurry. It doesn't really distract you from your driving. It's good. Now this vehicle has a lane keep assist system that is borderline worthless <laughs> because for one thing it doesn't turn on unless you're below I think 40 miles per hour so it doesn't even work on the highway uh, so that's basically I mean that was that, that's what <laughs> what I use it for is just kind of cruising on the highway kind of make it makes the high, the long monotonous highway drive a little bit less monotonous because you know because you're not hyper focused on the micro movement of the steering wheel uh so this one doesn't have that and when it does when it does turn on under 40 miles per hour it just kind of bounces between the lines it doesn't actually keep you in the center of the lane and in a solid position so it's, it's it, it doesn't even it's no factor i mean it's not a it's, there's nothing positive about it i mean as far as like i wouldn't pay extra for it but it has it so you know not a big deal and you don't have to turn it on so uh not a big deal there so right up in here is the bumpy part or they're having some road construction
Well, it was bumpy, but it looks like they're filled in the bumps for the most part. All right, so we'll go on the, the highway drive. So I'm gonna slow down, so let those slow pucks get out of the way. Cause this is where I wanted to accelerate. So you can hear the shifting and the, no, the, the acceleration noise and all that stuff. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put it 70. All right, we're going 70 miles per hour. And it's actually pretty smooth, but of course the snow, the slow poke's gonna get in the way. Uh, but hopefully you can get an idea of the road noise because it's actually pretty good. A little bit of road noise getting in, but it's not a problem. It's not. I don't hear hardly any wind noise, just a little bit. But it's not anything that a uh, little bit of a little bit of music won't overpower, you know. So this is the type of speeds where the lane, like a lane keep assist or lane centering system, pilot assist or whatever you want to call it, would be most useful. But look, I mean, you barely have to turn the steering wheel. It's such an easy to car vehicle to drive. It stays on the road and very feels very solid. So I'm gonna do some hard braking right here. Very excellent Ex uh, braking. And the shifting of the transmission, I really like. I like that traditional, just solid feeling transmission. They did a great job with the transmission. Uh, powertrain in general. I mean, it does have the this one has the turbocharged uh, system and engine, but man, does it feel good with the transmission? There's no wacky shift points or uh, anything like that. So it's the six-speed automatic transmission. So six speeds is apparently easy to for the system to you know keep in a stepped uh sequence without hunting for gears and stuff like that hopefully you can see the uh the heads up display because it does look pretty good And it shows the speed limit, the last speed limit sign the vehicle passed. So that way it can, it's real easy to miss them and not have, tr have, a, have trouble figuring out what the speed limit is because they're not always close together, the signs. And the, the gauge cluster is good. I mean, it's simple, easy to read, easy to understand. Uh, it has a few cool features that I point out in the full video.
So just to sum up, this is a, like I said, it's a subjective vehicle. So there's a lot of things that, that is praised that are, people praise this vehicle for certain features or certain designs or certain qualities that I don't agree with a hundred percent. So when I first started driving the, the Mazdas, um, I used to really like a lot of Mazdas a long time ago, but I was I was expecting a something grand, but it's actually just a basic vehicle. It's just a matter of whether you like it or not. Uh, there's not anything that pops out that says, "Wow, this is a th this is not a wow vehicle. It's a practical uh, vehicle," and and it's just a matter of you know, there's there's nothing hugely negative to say and there's nothing hugely positive to say for me you know my perspective from my point of view but they have had a, a decent reliability rating uh, Mazda has uh, the, the efficiency the fuel efficiency is you know fairly decent it's not spectacular and you know, so if you like the way it looks and you can get in it, get in and out and it's comfortable for you. Um, and you know, of course it has the cargo space and the passenger space that you need then, then yeah, I mean, it, it, it could potentially be perfect for you, you know, and also it's a little bit different. I mean, there is a lot of Mazdas on the road, but there's not quite as much, uh, Mazda doesn't sell, you know, like as much as Honda and Toyota and stuff. So it's a little bit different you get to have a little bit different vehicle it's not so much cookie cutter on the road and I, I mean the exterior looks I think it looks good and Mazda has a you know a good reputation in my in my book anyway so yeah it's up to you ultimately to drive it make sure the seats are comfortable that's that's the thing about the seats the seats actually uh, you can tell whether they're right for you in like 10 minutes you know it doesn't take long I mean, I almost tell, was able to tell immediately that I didn't, didn't really care for them. Uh, so it's not like you have to buy it and and then six months down the road, then you're like, yeah, I wish I wouldn't have bought this vehicle. You'll be able to tell if you like the seats or not pretty quick. Hopefully this video has been helpful. Um, there's a few things that I probably touched on before in other videos, but it's kind of more of a summary of my more recent experience with this vehicle. And, you know, I'm trying to see it from a different perspective. Uh, Cause like I said, there's a few things that it's kind of deal breakers for me, but a lot of people don't have a problem with those things and like the seat. They don't have a problem with the, the 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 knob down here for controlling the screen. Uh, you know, they prefer that actually. You know, so hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully it gives you some things to look at when you go for a test drive, uh, so you can understand a little bit more. Um, all of a sudden, people want to jump out in the road. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.